Okay, welcome back. We're going to have a quick look at our new Rebel Squadron build, uh, replacing the YT-1300 with uh, a B-Wing. And as always, I'm trying to achieve a 100-point squadron total. Not possible uh, with a B-Wing and an A-Wing using uh, upgrade cards and pilot cards that uh, were available uh, one year after the, uh, uh, the X-Wing Miniatures game first edition uh, became available. So, uh, in this instance, we're going to have 94 squadron points here. And that's fine, because uh, facing up against the uh, Imperials with uh, a 100-point squadron total right now, Boba Fett and the Fire Spray and the TIE Interceptor, uh, that means uh, the Rebels are going to have initiative, and that's really going to come in play into the Rebels' hand, because uh, the skill level of both the pilots are 8 which is the same as Boba Fett, also skill level 8. The Interceptor is skill level 7. Uh, that means when it comes between Boba Fett and these two ships, these two will always maneuver in action first, and they will always attack first. And that's, uh, that, can, that, can, I mean, that can come into play. That's, that's not all bad to be six points behind your opponent. There's this bidding war uh, in the first edition. I don't know if that holds true in the second edition or not, where you try to... to, to uh, shave down your squadron point total and still be uh, effective in combat. And uh, we'll see how this plays out for the Rebels. But I did make some changes to the uh, A-Wing loadout. Now, we're, we're sticking with the same pilot, skill level 8, Tycho Kelchu. Uh, you may perform actions even while you have stress tokens. Okay, that's all good and well. And uh, I've opted for the shield upgrade again, worth four squadron points. To increase the the wire of the A wings deflector shield value by one, giving it three shields, and that's okay. Uh, that is helpful. Okay. Now this is an upgrade card I wanted to use in the last match, but I just didn't have enough room for it with the Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon. Push the limit. Once per round, after you perform an action, you may perform one free action shown in your action bar, then receive one stress token. Now. This is going to pair well with uh, Tycho because you can do this and then have a stress token and you don't, you don't necessarily have to do a green maneuver in the next uh, action. You can't do a red maneuver because you have a stress token. But you may perform actions even while you have stress tokens. So this allows Tycho Kelchu here, uh, after using Push the Limit in the next round of combat, to perform an action without uh, having to perform a green maneuver. Okay, so these there's some synergy here and that's probably why there's an A-wing... Uh, artwork on this particular card. Okay, and we've just switched from cluster missiles to homing missiles, and I'm going to be perfectly honest. Why? It's because this one's worth five squadron points more than uh, cluster missiles. I just wanted to beef up the squadron point total. Range two to three, uh, four attack dice. You uh, spend a target lock to use this. The defender cannot spend evade tokens uh, during this attack. This is good for a rebel ship to have because practically every uh, Imperial Starfighter can evade. So that's a good neutralizer uh, versus this, okay? So that's the uh, Tycho Kelchu loadout. Not a lot of upgrades available for the A-Wing, okay? And keep in mind, the A-Wing only has two attack dice and two hull. It's pretty fragile, but it now has, as a result of that shield upgrade, three deflector shields. So that's going to be helpful there. Now, on to the B-Wing. We've gone with 10 Noom as the pilot. Skill level 8, the same as Tycho Kelchu, the same as Boba Fett, our primary opponent. Uh, when attacking, one of your critical hit results cannot be cancelled by defense die. That's actually pretty good. Now, he's loaded with different upgrades, and we'll see all those. 31 squadron points natively. So, the modification, and remember, every, every ship can get a modification. Some of them don't cost any squadron points, some of them do. This one costs 4. The engine upgrade. I, I boosted this from the Millennium Falcon. Uh, your attack bar gains the boost action icon for four squadron points. Okay, so the uh, B-Wing can <coughs> focus, target lock, and barrel roll natively, and now as a result of this modification, can also boost. That's pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me, the B-Wing probably not the most maneuverable ship out there. Now, I'm not sure we used this uh, particular... Uh, uh, elite upgrade card yet, but we're going to in the next match. I expose. It's an action. Until the end of the round, increase your primary weapon value by one 
and decrease your agility value by one. Now, on the one hand, the uh, B-Wing only has one agility dice to begin with, uh, so uh, this would take it down to zero. Basically going full offense at the risk of no defense. However, the B-Wing has three hull and five shields. Very tough. Uh, I would use this sparingly, but there may be, and we're going to test that, there may be instances where if you've got a, a TIE fighter in front of you, you want to take out quickly. This might be the, the way to do it. And if, if you go against, if you destroy the opponent that could otherwise counterattack against you and, and do damage to you uh, unabated, well, all, all's, all's the better. So we're gonna we're gonna test this one out, okay? Now, as far as the system upgrade, which we this is the first time we've ever seen these. There's only one choice at this point, and that's the fire control system. After you perform an attack, you may acquire a target lock on the defender. That's that's actually pretty cool. Uh, then we move on to the uh, secondary weapon upgrade, and I I decided to test this auto blaster. Uh, we, we've tested the uh, ion cannon before, and it's fine. Uh, ionization is a cool uh, thing added to the game here, but auto blaster, you have to be within range one. It does three damage. Uh, you, this does not stack with expose, okay? Expose only works on the primary weapons, the laser cannons on the, the ship, okay? It's an attack. Your critical result, or your, I'm sorry, your hit results cannot be canceled by, de by defense dice. That's just the hit results. Your criticals can. Now, the defender may cancel critical results before hit results, okay? Okay? So, when you're using the auto blasters, you're hoping for normal hits rather than critical hits, okay? But it, it's a close range, range one. And we'll see if that's helpful. And then, the B-Wing gets two different torpedoes, or two, two salvos of torpedoes. It has two torpedo icons in the uh, upgrade bar. So we're rolling with our old friend Proton Torpedoes. We know how those work. You can read the text if you don't. Okay. And Advanced Proton Torpedoes, which you have to use at range one. Uh, you have to spend the target lock. You may change up to three of your blank results to focus results. So, if you're using Advanced Proton Torpedoes for five attack dice, by the way, you're going to want to use a, a focus as your action. And you roll this. And then any blanks become focuses. Any focuses are focuses. Any hits are hits. More is the better. And then you can change all the focuses to hits. That's actually very strong, but you have to get the best use out of this. You have to use a focus token as your action uh, prior to shooting off your advanced proton torpedoes. Range one, highly situational. But again, we're going to test that. We're going to see if we can make use of it. This is a good way to take Boba Fett out quickly. Now, you won't get him out in one shot. Not, no way. I mean, this. I think this would take out all his shields if, if they all hit. And then um, do one hull damage. So, this is, this is going to be my fire spray uh, counter right here, hopefully. Unless the fire spray manages to take out the B-Wing quickly. You know how it works. Sometimes it's all about random luck of the, of the, of the dice roll. So, there you go, pals. That's the uh, next... Rebel Squadron I'm going to be flying with against Boba Fett and the Fire Spray, and I always forget the Interceptor pilot's name, Turfinner in a TIE Interceptor, which I have to confess, I've not been overly impressed with the TIE Interceptor. Sure, it's quick. Sure, it's maneuverable. It's also tissue thin as far as being able to withstand damage. That's why I feel like that all the Imperials benefit with smaller squadron point totals, but more ships, you know, swarming, they call that. So, um... Uh, We'll, we'll see how the Interceptor pairs with the TIE Bomber later on, and, and perhaps also a Lambda Shuttle. We'll just have to see. But uh, stay tuned next time, and we'll have a, a look at a matchup between uh, the Fire Spray and the TIE Interceptor versus the B-Wing and the A-Wing. And I'd, I, I'll probably lay asteroids down just to, you know, to give those obstacles and make it a little more challenging. Thank you so much for watching, pals. May the Force be with you. Talk to you soon.